In my previous videos, you've seen me flash the DJI Goggles V2 with the WTF OS, allowing us to see and record the Betaflight OSD in our goggles. Today, we're gonna flash the DJI Goggles V2 to work and accept the DJI O3 Air unit. Furthermore, I wanna see if the WTF operating system still stays on our goggles. In addition, showing if the WTF system can work with the new O3 Air unit and give me my OSD in the screen. So if you're interested in that, this is the video for you. So let's begin. Okay, so we're here at the computer. We have our DJI Goggles V2 that we did root earlier. Now the first thing you wanna do is prepare these goggles to bind with this Air unit. And that's to update the firmware on these goggles. Now, there is a DIY mode that we use for traditional or the first gen Air units. But for this one, because this air unit came from the DJI Avada, we have to put this into the FPV mode to update the firmware on the FPV side of this goggles. So I'm gonna power on my goggles here. I'm gonna go to the DJI Assistant app. There's actually two DJI Assistant apps and I figured that out the hard way when I had to update this initially when I first bought these goggles and it just wouldn't update. Now there's one here for the DJI FPV series as you can see right here. And there's also a DJI Assistant 2 for the consumer drone series. And you need both of those to update both the VTX and the goggles. For right now the goggles you wanna have the DJI FPV series. We're gonna plug this into the computer and update the firmware. All right, so I detected it, goggles V2 and you wanna to update to the latest firmware. I've already done that and you'll see it right here. And I am on the 010400. That's the one that I currently have on here. This is the, well, at the time I did upload it, that was the latest one. There is a latest one here, 01050000. Now I did not update to this version just because I, we don't know the potential of this one as of yet. We don't have any gotchas or bugs in there but we are using this one and it does give you the release notes as you can see right here. New support for the O3 Air unit, canvas mode, and all the other stuff. Now the other one I think, if you look at the release notes, it gives you all the 10-bit color, all that good stuff. It just depends on what you want. Sometimes knowing which firmware you put on your goggles will save you. And as you can see, this new one here, support for the Avada, as you can see, it specifies the Avada. I think this one also did give you uh, the restriction to actually um, <laughs> require your phone to be plugged in when flying the Avada drone. Since we're not using the Avada drone, it really doesn't apply to us, but I still don't want that restriction on my goggles. So that's why we are gonna go with the 01040000. That is done, that is now updated. Once this is now updated to your goggles, a couple of things are gonna happen. First thing, you're gonna notice that your menu is a little bit different. You're gonna see a little bit more options in your goggles. And let's see if I can see it in here. All right, so you go to your settings, go to about, switch aircraft model. And now I have four options in here. I have DJ FPV, which this was shipped with, so we have that option. DJ digital FPV system, that's the original air unit, the ones that we have in our hobby grade FPV quads. Then you have the DJ Avada, so that's new. So now this is not compatible with the DJ Avada, which is good. And at the bottom here, you see DJI O3 Air Unit, and that's the one we're looking for for this right here. So now we have four different operating systems, you can say per se, and they are now on here. So one should not affect the other. The second thing you're gonna notice after this is that once you go back to the original O3 Air Unit to actually bind to your other drones, you're gonna notice that all the stuff that we did to install the WTF OS and all the packages are now gone. So if you now connect to your actual older drone, you're not gonna see any OSD elements, you're not gonna see your 1200 milliwatt hack, you're not gonna have any audio recording, you're not even gonna have your OSD recording as well. All those are wiped away with this firmware update. The good thing though is that if you did root your goggles, and I do suggest you root your goggles, if you did root your goggles, the goggles are still rooted. So all you have to do now is go back to the same WTF website, the GitHub page, and then reinstall the WTF operating system as well as all the packages that you want for your goggles. And I've done a full video, two videos on how to actually install the WTF OS as well as install the packages and how to get the OSD in your goggles as well as in your recordings. So you will have to put that back 
into your goggles. And it's a small inconvenience, but you can easily get those features back into your goggles. Okay, so now that our goggles is now complete and ready for the VTX, now we need to update the actual O3 air unit. And we need the USB-C cable. Now the cool thing about this O3 air unit is that you don't have to power on the drone to actually update the firmware. Once you plug this into the computer, it does receive power that way. Now the only kicker here is that to update the firmware on this one, you cannot update it using the DJI Assistant 2 DJI FPV series. That is not the one, that's the one for our goggles. You need to download and install the DJI Assistant 2 consumer drone series. And here we go, this is the other app, very similar interface, but as you can see here, DJ Assistant 2 Consumer Drone Series. So why are we using this as a consumer drone? Well, it's not a consumer drone, it's actually a hobby grade item. It's because we're using the O3 air unit that came from the Avada, and that Avada is a consumer drone, as you can see right here. So let's plug it in and see what firmware is on here. All right, DJ O3 air unit, I'm gonna click on that. And, uh, because this is a totally new product, I will have to activate it. In fact, before I did this, I tried to bind this to my goggles to avoid this process and it just wouldn't do it. So, although it says activate later, it's kind of interesting. Let's activate this puppy here. All right, so it's activated, activation, success, complete. So that's done. All right, latest version right here. Let's see the release notes on this one. All right, so. DJ goggles V2 4K at 120 and 100. So I might upgrade it, but we are gonna not do that. So we're gonna unplug it. All right, my goggles is powering up here. That's cool. I'm gonna power on my drone as well. Let's try to bind these now. I'm gonna hit the bind button on this. All right, it's flashing. I'm gonna hit the bind button on my goggles as well. Did that. You can hear it beeping. And there you go. I can see everything. And I have I have OSD in here. The problem is, can I record OSD? And that's what I want to know. That's going to be the kicker. It's okay. Now it's recording, surprisingly. Here I am. And you can see everything here. It's showing all the information. Uh, so let's stop the recording. And hopefully, that worked, hopefully that recorded. I I don't know, interesting, very, very interesting. And we're doing this on the spot here, guys, and I just wanna make sure that that was recorded on the file. All right, interesting. So it did record, all right, but there's no, <laughs> there's no OSD file. Oh man, it does not record OSD elements, that sucks. Man, I wish it did, but that makes sense. This partition portion of the goggles isn't rooted, so it doesn't generate an OSD file, and that's what we need to overlay this information in our DVR. Okay, so that answers a lot of my questions. Okay, so the results weren't exactly what I expected or actually what I wanted. We did have a successful bind. We did bind the O3 air unit to the DJI Goggles V2. We showed you how to do that. That all worked. We have an image. We also have OSD on our screen, which is good. That works, which makes sense. This thing here does support OSD and it also is connected to the flight controller. So it makes sense that it can transmit OSD elements to our goggles. So that's cool. The one thing that it can't do at this time is record the OSD items on the recording. So we gotta find a way to get that on there. And once we do, we should be good. And I suspect that's gonna be a firmware update on the, yeah, that'll be a firmware update on the DJI Goggles V2. And that's gonna only be done by DJI, unfortunately. But anyways, if you got any help from this video, hit that like button. And if you wanna see the review on this drone here, the Nord 5 HD, this is my premium drone, really awesome drone here. We're gonna take it for our first flight now. Hit that subscribe button, therefore you'll be notified whenever I do drop that video, guys. And that's me for, if you haven't seen how to put the OSD in your goggles, as well as your DVR for the original air unit, I've done videos in that as well. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.